Hello everyone, my name is Shahad Al Ghamdi and today we will be talking about pain management. So what is pain? Pain means unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Pain can be classified either by the source of the pain or the duration. Pain classifications based on the source include somatic pain, which patients usually describes as localized, constant, stabbing, or sharp pain. For example, pain from joints or muscles. Visceral pain, which is more generalized and described as deep pressure or aching pain. For example, chest pain in patients with angina. Neuropathic pain, which involves peripheral or central nervous system, and it does not respond to conventional analgesics. However, it may respond to adjuvant analgesic drugs. For example, patients with uncontrolled diabetes will likely suffer peripheral neuropathy. And lastly, physiologically based pain syndromes. Traditional analgesia in this case is not indicated. Pain can be chronic, acute, or breakthrough pain. Pain management starts with the pain screening, which is a tool that is age, cognitive, and culturally specific to the patient population, to which it's applied and which results in assessment and measurement of the intensity of the pain. Numerical rating scale, NRS, is a common one which consists of numerical scale from 0 to 10, where 0 means you have no pain, 1 to 3 means mild pain, 4 to 7 is considered moderate pain, 8 and above is a severe pain. After pain assessment, we begin our pain management plan starting with non-pharmacological options. Physical therapy, which includes manual therapy like mobilization and manipulation of the joints and massage, therapeutic exercise like balance training, postural correction, or other intervention like hot packs, paraffin wax therapy, or ice packs. Occupational therapy can also be used as non-pharmacological approach. Now let's talk about the pharmacological interventions. We can easily classify the pharmacological treatment into three main groups, opioid, non-opioid, and adjuvant therapy. So first of all, what does opioid mean? Opioids are basically a class of drug naturally found in the opium puppy plant. There are three main groups of opioids, natural opioids like morphine or codeine, semi-synthetic opioids like hydrocodone, hydromorphone, oxymorphone, or oxycodone, synthetic opioids like fentanyl, tramadol, or methadone. Opioids act on opioid receptor on the neuronal cell membrane. When they bind to opioid receptor on the presynaptic neuron, they inhibit calcium conductance, which inhibits the release of neurotransmitter, which finally inhibit the transmission of pain formation to the brain. And when they act on the postsynaptic neuron, they open the potassium channels, and this increases the movement of potassium from neurons, which then prevent neurons from firing in actional potential. Since we're talking here about mechanism of action, it's important to mention that exposure to opioid drug can lead to tolerance, which involves decreased responsiveness to the drug, and we need to increase the dose to reach that same effect. Mechanism of tolerance are not completely understood, but are thought to involve adaptive pathway via increasing receptors on pre- or postsynaptic neurons. Opioid drug side effects include dependence or addiction, CNS depression, sedation, making fatal signs low and slow, like lowering heart rate, lowering respiratory rate, and lowering blood pressure or causing hypotension, especially orthostatic hypotension, and so on, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. The antidote for opioid drugs, including heroin, is naloxone, which is an opioid receptor antagonist. And now let's talk about non-opioid drugs like nanosteroidal anti-inflammatory, staminophen, COX-2 inhibitors. So, nasides are naproxen, salicylate acid or aspirin, acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin, ibuprofen or indomethacin, ketarolac. They all have an anti inflammatory effect and antipyretic effect as well. They work by inhibiting 
cyclooxygenase 1 and 2 or COX-1 and 2 enzymes which decrease the production of prostaglandins. So what are prostaglandins? So prostaglandins basically are hormones created by a chemical reaction with COX-1 and 2 at the site where an injury or other issue occurs. They are unique among other hormones because unlike most of the chemical messengers, they are not secreted from a gland. Instead, they are created at the time they are needed directly when the problem exists. Now, side, side effects include stomach ulcer or heartburn, increased blood pressure, kidney problems, dizziness or headache. Nasides are contraindicated in patients with peptic ulcer or stomach bleeding, uncontrolled hypertension, history of transit ischemic attack, stroke, and myocardial infraction, excluding aspirin, of course, in the third trimester of pregnancy, and if the patients have Nasides hypersensitivity. And now let's make a step-by-step -step plan to treat patients with pain. Step 1. For mild to moderate pain, we usually start with a non-opioid, for example, acetaminophen or ibuprofen, and we increase the dose if necessary to the maximum recommended dose. We may use an adjuvant such as antidepressant or anticonvulsant if indicated. However, if the patient presents with moderate or severe pain, we skip step 1 and start with step 2 directly. Step 2. If or when non-opioids do not adequately relief pain, we add in an opioid intent for moderate pain, such as hydrocodone, and usually it's combined with acetaminophen. We may add or continue adjuvant if appropriate. Step 3. If or when the opioid for mild to moderate pain is no longer adequately relieve the pain, switch to an opioid that is not combined with another agent, such as acetaminophen and one is that effective for moderate to severe pain, like morphine, oxycodone, hydromorphone. And do not forget to add adjuvant if appropriate, of course. Thank you for watching, and please let me know if you have any questions. See you next week.